In this demonstration, we will review how to use Microsoft Word to format a research paper. To start off with, we're going to open Microsoft Word by clicking on the blue W in our taskbar. And once it's opened, we'll create a blank document. First thing that I want to do is change my line spacing. So I'm going to go to the line spacing in the toolbar, select the down arrow, and click 2. And I'll put some basic course information, so I'll put my name. Next, I'm going to center. and put in my type, title, so my great research paper. I'll hit enter, and I'll go back to left align. I'm gonna make this a little bit larger so you can see, so I'm gonna press and hold the control key on my keyboard and use my the wheel on my mouse to zoom in. And I want first line indent. So I'm gonna go to view, ruler, and here's where I can change my spacing or my indent. So I'm going to move the top arrow in to half inch. And then I'll start my paper. Okay, so this is going to be a very short research paper. Next, I'm going to add a header. Now I can turn off the ruler. You go to Insert, Header, and then it's going to give me some default options. So I can look at my different options, but I'm just going to go with the top, which is blank. And it just gives me a type here. If I hit my tab key on my keyboard, it takes me to center. And if I hit it again, it'll take me to right align. I'm going to type in my last name. And then I'm going to insert the page number. Now, if I type a number one, it will say Bernard one on every page. Well, that's not what I want. I want it to say what page number we're actually on. So go to page number, current position, I'll keep things simple, and plane number. So now as we go to different pages, it'll update the page number. Now this page document's going to, I'm going to want it to be in Times New Roman 12 point font. So I'm going to highlight my header information. I'm going to change my font to Times New Roman. 12 point. Go back to my document. And here I want to select all my text as well. So to select it, I can use my mouse and highlight, or with my keyboard, I can press Control A. Here I'm going to want to go with Times New Roman as well, and 12 point font. Next, I want to add a footnote. So after my first sentence here, I'm going to say insert. Actually, I believe it's under references. References, insert footnote. And I can see that it added a superscript one. And if I go to the bottom of my page, there's where the footnote is. No matter how much text is on my page, it will continue to keep that footnote at the bottom of this page. It'll wrap the other text. Next, I want to add a source or a bibliography. So we're going to assume that what I'm saying here relates to an information source. 
I'm going to go to References, which is good. And make sure MLA is selected under Style, which it is. And I'll go to Manage Sources. Here, I'm going to click New. And we'll go with this. So we'll go with um, Author. Oops. So I'll enter in the information. I can change the tag name even, so I'll go with, um, there we go, click OK. And now I've got my bibliography. This is going to help me build it later on. So I'll click Close. And I want to insert the citation right there. So if I click Insert Citation, it added the citation for my bibliography. I'm going to add another one. So after Fun, I'm going to add a new source. For this one, we'll go with a journal article. And my tag name, it can be whatever I like. So I'm going to go with E. Jones. I'm going to keep them consistent. Click OK. And I can see that it's created my next source. It's also putting them in alphabetical order. So I'll click Close. And if I want to add my source here, Insert Citation, Jones. Perfect. You'll notice if I hit enter, it has me with a first line indent. I'm gonna do a copy and paste just so you could see the document get a little larger. And you can see that we're on to page three, and it goes by our page three. Now, I want to insert my citations. So I'm going to go to insert, or I'm sorry, well, yeah, first insert. I want to go to page break, which will put it on its own page. So now I've been R4. And that's much better than hitting enter a bunch of times, because as you modify the pages or your document, you're going to find that the number of spaces needed changes. By doing a page break after the last line, or the line that you clicked page break on, it automatically goes to a new page. So here I go to References, Bibliography, and I've got different options here. I'm going to go with Works Cited. And it inserted my Works Cited for me. So you can see how powerful Word can be when creating a research paper. You can manage your sources. You can insert your citations. And then you just simply create a new bibliography. You just tell it to insert it, and it does it for you. Um, it also does it in alphabetical order. So there's our document. Um, if we want to change our margins, we can go to Page Layout margins, and even custom. And here's where we could change those if we found it necessary, which I don't. I only need one inch margins all the way around. If I want to go to view, 
I can look at multiple pages at once and see a little bit better on how my document lays out. Now I can see I have a spelling error, so I want to make sure that I do my spelling and grammar check. So go back to home. And under references, or I'm sorry, review, spelling and grammar, and it'll take me to my different options. So here, a course is correct, so we'll change. The spelling of my last name is correct, but it's not in the dictionary. So here I'll click ignore all, or I could have added it to the dictionary. And now spelling and grammar is checked on my document. I can always go back to view and view my pages normally once again. Once complete with my document, and I hope that you've been saving throughout yours, you can click the Save button and save it to your computer. There's this Recent Folders option within Microsoft Office. I'm not a big fan of it. I prefer to browse and automatically or manually select the location of my files. Um, it just gives me a little bit more confidence that I know exactly where it was placed. So your seal G. And save. I can do a pre -pr print preview. So if I go to File, Print, I can see what my document looks like. And I can use this scroll bars here, and that's exactly what it should look like if printed out with a printer. Or I can go through and use my print options. And that concludes the very basics of creating a research paper using Microsoft Word.